Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. You're listening to the RX Daily Dose. Today's episode is being recorded for Monday, August 3rd, and I'm your host, Ian Parnagoni. We update this podcast for healthcare providers, medical professionals, and anyone who has an interest in drug updates. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media, including iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram. All links can be found in the show notes below. So as you probably noticed, I took two weeks off for some much-needed time off, but we're back this week, and in today's episode, we're going to talk first about the ongoing COPD triplet wars with the most recent approval of Brestry for maintenance treatment of patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. We'll also talk about the approval of Zywave to treat cataplexy, Zeglize for head lice, and we'll also bring up approval of Tacardis, which is a new CAR-T therapy. As always, feel free to skip around. I'm going to include times in the show notes so you can get the drugs that interest you. Getting started, The FDA has approved AstraZeneca's 3-in-1 inhaler, Brestri Aerosphere, for the maintenance treatment of COPD. The drug is a combination of the three ingredients included in AstraZeneca's dual drug regimens Symbicort, which is a combination of budesonide and formoterol, and Bevespi, a combination of glycopyrrolate and formoterol. The approval which came on AZ's second try with the FDA and after go-aheads by authorities in Japan and China puts the company three years behind GSK's rival med Trilogy Ellipta. AZ was hit with an FDA complete response letter in the fall of 2019. At that time, the company had already reported positive data from the Phase 3 Kronos trial. Brestree hit all but one of nine primary endpoints. In a head-to-head comparison against old blockbuster Symbicort and its Aerosphere tech-delivered counterpart PT-009, Brestree showed a numerical but not statistically significant advantage at reducing the rate of sudden worsening of COPD symptoms over a period of 24 weeks. AZ then immediately resorted to results from a second Phase 3 program dubbed Ethos for its second try. According to detailed data recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine, Brestree over 52 weeks significantly reduced sudden instances of symptom worsening by 24% compared with Bevespi and by 13% against PT-009. The results were similar with half the level of Brestree's budesonide component at 160 micrograms strength. The final FDA-approved Brestree has 320 micrograms of the corticosteroid. The Brestree approval now gives AstraZeneca another venue in which to challenge its respiratory treatment arch-rival, GSK, which has already enjoyed a three-year head start in the COPD triplet market with Trilogy. That drug's 2019 sales reached $662 million and hit $247 million in the first quarter of 2020. Meanwhile, the GSK triplet could soon find new use as a treatment for asthma, with filings currently before the FDA. In the Phase 3 Captain study, Trilogy beat GSK's own Brio on a metric that measures the volume of air a patient can exhale in one second an indicator of lung function. However, on the study's key secondary endpoint of annualized rate of moderate or severe attacks, there was no significant difference between the two treatment arms, despite a 13% numerical reduction in favor of Trilogy. One thing you can bet on is AZ trying to grab market share away from GSK now that they have Brestree hitting the market. Also this week, the FDA recently approved Jazz Pharmaceuticals' new drug application for Zywave, a new sleep disorder drug. Zywave was approved by the FDA to treat cataplexy or excessive daytime sleepiness in patients 7 years of age and older with narcolepsy. 
Narcolepsy is a chronic sleep disorder categorized by an overwhelming daytime drowsiness and sudden attacks of sleep. People with narcolepsy often find it difficult to stay awake for long periods of time, regardless of the circumstances. The condition, which afflicts an estimated 170,000 people in the U.S., is associated with an increased prevalence of certain comorbid conditions, including obesity, hypertension, and diabetes. Some people with narcolepsy also suffer from cataplexy, which is categorized by a sudden loss of muscle tone while a person is awake. Cataplexy leads to weakness and a loss of voluntary muscle control. It is often triggered by sudden strong emotions such as laughter, fear, anger, stress, or excitement. Jazz plans to launch Zywave by the end of the year. Zywave is comprised of calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium oxibates in an oral solution. Oxibates are central nervous system depressants. Multiple Zywave dosing options will be available for adult and pediatric patients. Prescribers can titrate the oxibate compound into unequal doses taken over the course of the night. When starting the new oxibates compound in someone who has been using sodium oxibate, the starting dose of the new oxibates is as they were taking sodium oxibate and titrated as needed based on efficacy and tolerability. The FDA approval of Zywave is based on a global phase 3 double-blind placebo-controlled study that demonstrated the statistically significant improvement in the number of weekly cataplexy attacks and Epworth sleepiness scale scores for those treated with the oxibate compared with those treated with placebo. The company's other sleep disorder drugs are Sunosi and Zyram. Sunosi is used to improve wakefulness in adult patients with excessive daytime sleepiness associated with narcolepsy or obstructive sleep apnea. The drug was launched in July of 2019 and generated sales of 3.7 million last year. Zyrem, like Zywave, is approved to treat cataplexy or excessive daytime sleepiness in patients 7 years of age and older with narcolepsy. Zyrem generated sales of 1.6 billion last year. The FDA also approved abametapir, which goes by brand name Zeglis, for the treatment of head lice infestation in patients aged 6 months and older. Zeglis is a pediculicide that works by inhibiting metalloproteinases, which play a role in physiological processes critical to egg development and survival of lice. The product is indicated for use in the context of an overall lice management program that includes washing and drying all recent worn clothing, hats, used bedding and towels, washing personal care items such as combs, brushes, hair clips, and using a fine-tooth comb or special knit comb to remove dead lice and nits. The approval was based on two identical multi-center double-blind phase 3 trials that evaluated the efficacy and safety of Zeglis lotion in 704 patients aged 6 months with head lice infestation. The approval was based on two identical multi-center double-blind phase 3 trials that evaluated the efficacy and safety of Zeglis lotion in 704 patients aged 6 months and older with head lice infestation. The primary endpoint was the proportion of patients who were free of live lice at follow-up visits on days 1, 7, and 14. Results from both studies showed a significantly greater proportion of patients treated with Zeglis were free of live lice at all follow-up visits compared with the vehicle group. That was 81.1% and 81.8% in both trials, versus 50.9% and 47.2% in placebo. As for safety, the most common adverse reactions associated with treatment included erythema, rash, skin burning sensation, contact dermatitis, vomiting, eye irritation, pruritus, and hair color changes. Additionally, the use of drugs that are substrates of cytochrome P450 should be avoided within two weeks after application, as concomitant use may lead to increased systemic concentrations of the interacting drugs. 
Zeglai's lotion contains 0.74% of abimetapir and will be supplied in 7-ounce bottles. Treatment involves a single application and any unused product should be discarded. The FDA also approved Brexy Cabtagene Autolucel, which goes by brand name Tacardis, a cell-based gene therapy for treatment of adult patients diagnosed with mantle cell lymphoma who have not responded to or who have relapsed following other kinds of treatment. Tacardis, a chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapy, is the first cell-based gene therapy approved by the FDA for the treatment of MCL. MCL is a rare form of cancerous B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma that usually occurs in middle-aged or older adults. In patients with MCL, B-cells, a type of white blood cell which helps the body fight infection, change into cancer cells that start to form tumors in the lymph nodes and quickly spread to other areas of the body. Each dose of Tocardis is a customized treatment created using a patient's own immune system to help fight the lymphoma. The patient's T-cells, a type of white blood cell, are collected and genetically modified to include a new gene that facilitates the targeting and killing of the lymphoma cells. These modified T-cells are then infused back into the patient. The safety and efficacy of Tocardis was established in a multicenter clinical trial of 60 adults with refractory or relapsed MCL who were followed for at least six months after their first objective disease response. The complete remission rate after treatment with Tocardis was 62%, with an objective response rate of 87%. The label for Tocardis carries two boxed warnings, one for cytokine release syndrome, which is a systemic response to the activation and proliferation of CAR T-cells causing high fever and flu-like symptoms, and secondly for neurologic toxicities. Both cytokine release syndrome and neurologic toxicities can be fatal or life-threatening. The most common side effects of Tocardis include serious infections, low blood cell counts, and a weakened immune system. Side effects from treatment usually appear within the first one to two weeks after treatment, but some side effects may occur later. Because of the risk of cytokine release syndrome and neurological toxicities, Tocardis is being approved with a risk evaluation and mitigation strategy, that's REMS, which includes elements to ensure safe use. The risk mitigation measures for Tocardis are identical to those of the current REMS program for another CAR-T therapy, Yescarta. To further evaluate the long-term safety of Tocardis, the FDA is requiring the manufacturer to conduct a post-marketing observational study involving patients treated with Tocardis. Tocardis was approved under the accelerated approval pathway and was granted priority review and breakthrough therapy designations. Tocardis also received orphan drug designation, which provides incentives to assist and encourage the development of drugs for rare diseases. The Tocardis application was reviewed using a cross-agency approach. The clinical review was coordinated by the FDA's Oncology Center of Excellence, while CBER conducted all other aspects of review and made the final product approval determination. And that's all I have for right now. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll include all links in the show notes below, so please go back and check those out too. Please connect with me on any of your social media platforms and give me feedback on what you heard today. I'd love to know what you thought about the episode. And as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. And thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.